At the turn of the millennium, we experienced the largest bubble that ever had occurred up to that time. What distinguished the internet bubble from others was its association with both new technologies and new trade opportunities. Also exceptional is the fact that this bubble set new records. It emerged simultaneously as the greatest creator and the greatest destroyer of wealth. During this economic episode, Goldman Sachs proclaimed that investor sentiment was not a long-term risk. Unfortunately, this sentiment proved to be a short-term risk with dire consequences for many investors and companies. The NASDAQ Stock Exchange listed the lion's share of internet and related technology stocks. However, this new millennium did not show kindness to the market. This is significant because the NASDAQ index tripled during the boom as internet company price-to-earnings ratios climbed to over 100 to 1. By 2000, investor expectations for the future reached 25% or higher. However, even though Cisco surpassed a price-to-earnings ratio of greater than 100 to 1, the earnings of Cisco grew at 15% per year. Unfortunately, Cisco lost 90% of its value when the bubble burst. Other companies such as Amazon, Lucent Technologies, and Yahoo lost between 93% and 99% plus of their value from the high water mark of 2000 to the low tide of 2001 to 2002. Security analysts at Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, and Solomon Smith Barney provided much of the hot air for the bubble. They based their success on their ability to steer lucrative investment banking business to their firms by promising ongoing, favorable research coverage that would support the initial public offerings in the aftermarket. Analysts pushed the line that traditional valuation metrics lose relevance during the Big Bang stage of an industry, which is a time to be reckless though rational. Individual stock prices soared while security analysts refrained from biting the hands that fed them. Traditionally, analysts rated 10 buys for every one sell. However, during this bubble, the ratio of buys to sell neared 100 to 1. Investment gurus marching in lockstep helped to convince the public that investing was easy. When the bubble burst, celebrity analysts or others in their firms faced lawsuits, investigations, and SEC fines. By 2001, the United States Secret Service and the SEC had commenced prosecution of more than 5,000 cases in respect to the market structures and conducts that led to the collapse. Sadly, most of their original files were destroyed along with their Manhattan offices in Building 7 of the World Trade Center when it collapsed in the late afternoon of 11 September 2001. As a result, we never may know the extent of the fraud and market manipulation that accompanied fee-based underwriting, cheerleading research and analysis, and the infectious greed that contributed to this very destructive bubble. <laughs>